What's up internet, it's your soul, and wow, will the manipulation of people's thinking in order to, let's say, limit freedom ever stop? This is vice.com's motherboard uh, section, and here's a story about Trump's recent so-called fringe social media meeting. Um, I haven't actually watched the whole recording of that event, so... You know, I'm not going to claim to be some expert on it. I've just listened to other people's commentary and seen some clips. I'm totally open to the idea that most of the people invited were, let's say, empire building kind of right wing characters. Uh, however, there are a couple of people lumped in with that, which Vice is even exposing and focusing on here, which I really think need to be highlighted because they definitely, from my understanding, are not right-wing, really. One in particular is uh, Bill Ottman from Minds.com. I've actually met or spoken to Bill. Uh, I was invited to work for their company early on, and I do pay attention to what he says. There is no way in my mind that you can associate him with Nazis. It's just, it's so ridiculous that I feel like I have to comment on this. So my uh, Vice is actually claiming here, um, as it says, invited so fringe social media company popular with Nazis to the White House. First of all, a fringe social media company. Well, fringe tends to kind of mean out there, um, not very well known and wildly different and sort of, um, you know, I guess people would view that with a negative sort of slant. Um, being different, first of all, is not a bad thing. When you're comparing yourself to Facebook and Twitter and these sites who heavily censor, um, heavily manipulate information in certain ways, proven by leaked videos, proven by leaked documents, proven by countless, countless examples and experiences of countless people. Unless you want to live in some sort of homogenous um, society that, that doesn't stand for any variation or individuation and just everyone conforms to this prescribed top-down model of normality then you really shouldn't be against people being different and the great irony here is that they're actually then trying to link this company to Nazis who are hated and vilified because of their oppression of anyone who's different it's is so there's so much sort of double speak and backwards logic here it's almost hard to even track it all but so let's just break this down Minds was invited to the social media summit, um, but not Facebook and Twitter. Well, that's understandable, given that Facebook and Twitter are anti-free speech, um, basically heavily controlled, heavily censored. It is a bit odd in the sense that records and experience show that Facebook is pretty much controlled by the US government and CIA. So, you know, I'm not going to go too much into that, but... I mean, maybe that's just playing into this whole image that Donald Trump is anti-establishment when probably in reality he isn't at all. But anyway, um, Minds is a free speech social network like Steam, like Eureka.org. And presumably, well, that's basically why they are popular. And, you know, as I understand it, that would be some part of why Trump invited them. Um, I'm not a fan of Trump by any means, if anybody who listens to me will know that, uh, but I, I am a, a fan of truth, and I, as I said, I happen to have met um, Bill Ottman, and there's just no way that he's a Nazi, it's completely ridiculous, or even supportive of Nazis. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've seen him openly say that he's absolutely not in support of Nazis, and as it says here, Mines did block the Nazi accounts that they're saying were on there. So... Um, so yeah, uh, the only social media network that has publicly said it's attending is Minds, billed as the crypto anti-Facebook and once home to several neo-Nazi extremist groups. Well, neo-Nazi groups can start up on any social network. I mean, you know, even if you've got a lot of people working to admin and police the network, they can still create a profile there and then there's going to be a period of time before they're removed. Uh, so trying to highlight that as if Minds is this particularly neo-Nazi website, I think is a bit of an error. I do have to say, to be honest, I was there since the very beginning of Minds, and it is true that it has become a lot more right-wing and a lot more um, divisive and unpleasant in a lot of ways because of a lot of profiles like that on there. I do get that, and I don't like it, and that's part of the reason why I don't use it. But 
it definitely, in my opinion, is not due to anything to do with Bill, um, Bill Ottman being a Nazi or supporting that kind of mentality. If you listen to what he says, he supports free speech, full stop. And free speech, for anybody actually who cares about real free speech, means free speech. It doesn't mean free speech except for the people we don't like. You know, that's it's just ridiculous. So, yes, I don't want to hear neo-Nazi stuff. I don't want to particularly, you know, see it. But free speech allows people to say these things, full stop. And, you know, you can block them, you can ignore them, you can shout at them, you can do whatever you want. Now, I have to say, as somebody who, you know, is a descendant of people who fought in World War Two and literally, you know, risked their lives and most of their friends were killed killing Nazis, I'm no fan of Nazis. And, you know, I... But I do feel like I'm speaking for those people who, to some extent, who fought those Nazis when I say that they didn't do that so that certain people could determine what everyone else can say. They pretty much did it to stop certain people determining what everyone else can say. So we've got to be very careful here not to basically align with Nazis while claiming that we're fighting Nazis, Vice, um, and anyone else sort of using... Uh, this an oversimplification of the situation to try to demonise people who are actually supporting free speech. On top of that, there's an important point here. How do you actually stop evil in the world? If you're somebody who sees evil and wants to stop it, how do you stop it? Do you do you have war to kill all the people that you demand or you you claim are being evil? Well, no. History shows that that's not going to work, and basic physics and maths shows you that isn't going to work. You can't basically achieve anything beneficial or peace or harmony by creating more inharmony or loss of harmony. So how do you do it? Well, basically, there are various approaches to that. But one way is you need to, at the very least, you need to understand what's causing what you're seeing. You need to understand where the origins of the evil are and then analyse the situation and make changes that need to be made to find the right balance. And you aren't going to be able to do that as long as you can't hear the people speaking that you think are evil. If you don't know what they're saying and why they're saying it, there's nothing you can really do to help them see the light as you understand it. And I feel like this censoring of groups who are counter to, let's say, what most people want to see, actually is a is a is yet another example of the way that the state and um, pyramid power systems try to take power away from the average person. Basically, they're saying, we get to determine what you see and hear to, for your own safety. And you don't get to know what you're not allowed to see and hear because basically it's too dangerous for you. Now, that's not right, first of all, and it's not empowering either. It basically results in people falsely believing that they live in a world that isn't as it actually is, A, and B, it doesn't empower people to know how to solve the problems. It leaves it up to the governments, and the governments generally don't solve the problems. They just, I mean, in some cases they make it worse. Generally speaking, you know, it it, it just escalates and escalates, and we just it's just a nightmare, isn't it? So, you know, how, um, with the benefit of hindsight of having looked back at World War II and what happened there, it is possible for the average person to study deeply and to learn why that happened and the psychology involved and how to correct it and how to help people who got caught up in it. But you can't do that if you don't even know these people exist in the world today, right? Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky subject, but Vice definitely has done a disservice here to the truth in, in many ways. Um, so they've also called Tim Paul right-wing, which I find a bit odd. I mean, I don't listen to him a lot, but... That's not something I would have called him. I would never have said he was right-wing particularly. But anyway, I would have said he was more of a somebody who seeks the truth and over the prescribed mainstream narrative. And, you know, maybe that's why he got invited to the White House. I don't know. But So it says here, previous motherboard investigation found that militant neo-Nazi groups connected to Atomwaffen Division, a violent American hate group connected to several murders, was using Minds as a platform for recruiting and spreading propaganda. Mines eventually banned the account when Motherboard showed them to the platform, but the company's lax content moderation allowed them to proliferate unchecked for months. 
All right, so yeah, I, I could fully accept, I don't know exactly how many people are, are monitoring mines, but I can fully accept that they have nowhere near the number of people that Facebook do doing that kind of thing. Um, and I can also accept that there's probably ground for them, you know, maybe employing more people and being more active in that sense. But to pull a story out of that to try to associate the CEO with Nazism is just wrong um, on so many levels. So, I mean, Media Matters is reporting the summit will be attended by an assortment of individuals connected to nationalist movements, QAnon and anti-Semitic conspiracies surrounding George Soros. All right, well, let's just comment on that. I'm not a fan of nations. I hate nations, in fact. I think nations are part of the division of humanity that's caused so much suffering. And, you know, I'm not saying we should have a world government either. I don't really think we should have any government. But let's just use simple logic here. We're talking about the White House, which is the head of the American nation. Obviously, <laughs> nationalist movements are going to be involved in that, aren't they? It's like saying, oh my God, this football fan's going to a football game. It's completely ridiculous. QAnon, well, I'm not a fan of QAnon either. Um, and I think that there's a lot of bullshit going around in that circle. But, you know, again, uh, you shouldn't really be surprised if people who support that go to one of Trump's meetings, right? I mean, that's part of their whole um, kind of ideology, in a sense, that all these things are connected. And then anti-Semitic conspiracies surrounding George Soros. Well, I don't think you have to go very far to see the real conspiracies that George Soros has been involved in. Um, and I don't think it's anti-Semitic to point out the racial alignment of the people surrounding some of those conspiracies. I do fully accept that there are very anti-Semitic people around and online. Um, and I don't know exactly who they're talking about who attended this meeting. So, you know, I'm not going to comment too much on that. But I know that I've been called anti-Semitic by at least one person. And I have Jewish friends. And like I was just on Israeli national television. Um, well, it hasn't been broadcast yet. There's a chance I will be. But I'm not pro-Israel either. <laughs> but you you need to, people need to stop oversimplifying things. Because some people have a lot deeper awareness of what's happening in the world and ask a lot deeper questions. And their choices are based on a lot deeper um, logic than the average person's. And, you know, judgments and oversimplification don't get you anywhere. Uh, I do try to avoid that myself. So, yeah, Tim Paul, a right-wing media figure who once worked at Vice News, went as well. Now, like I said, I don't really think he's right-wing at all. I don't even know where this idea comes from. And people have commented, it might have been James Corbett or someone else commented recently, you know, it's very convenient for the mainstream media to portray that um, the censorship is only a problem affecting uh, right-wing people and, you know, Trump and all these things. This whole, the people, that, or it's very, actually, it's very, um, there are numerous benefits to numerous groups of trying to highlight that all of this is relating to only right-wing people, when it isn't. And I think the fact that they're calling Tim Paul right-wing is an example of that, uh, in the sense that, First of all, right wing to me means um, traditionally a power hierarchy system of people who try to dominate and determine that they're right. And basically, um, it's a traditional sort of. Basically, they sort of see the empires and tradition as and, and authority and hierarchy as being a good thing. And you know, you could make cases for that, but at the end of the day, history shows us that that's not usually a good thing, and that's usually the source of most of the death and war. Uh, and then they'll point to left wing people and say, "Oh, look, look, look at these commies trying to create an authoritarian regime." That look at history. Look, these they've been behind so many killings. No, it's not really left wing per se that's behind all these killings. It's authoritarianism and hierarchy. And right wing traditionally is much more for that than left wing, as I understand it. Um, so if you're trying to sell the unsellable, which is basically authoritarian hierarchic systems as a as a elitist billionaire, um, and you know that most people who are poor are never going to support you in that, how can you try to spin it so that they'll buy into it and support it? Well, one way is you could try to make it out as if right wing people are being victimized, like they're the victims and and, you know, you're not getting they're not getting a fair deal. And, you know, oh, they, yeah, I mean, yeah, fair enough. They do pretty much own most of the planet financially speaking but um you know still somehow magically they're they're all being badly treated and the left-wing people who want change and who uh you know typically have less wealth 
Well, you know, yeah, there are people in Google who are left wing, let's say, but I would say they're more authoritarian. This is the thing. You need to you need to separate left wing and right wing out from authoritarian and freedom seeking. Uh, you know, it's possible to be authoritarian and left wing and authoritarian or right and right wing. And I suppose you could be freedom seeking and right wing, but you would be very different to the majority of what has passed for right wing throughout the entire history of humanity. So, also in attendance amongst others will be far-right radio host Bill Mitchell, known for his meme-making under the name Carpe Doctum. I've never heard of this person, can't comment. Uh, never heard of this person. Um, so, Mind CEO Bill Ottman, who is scheduled to attend the summit, according to Pulp, has given a few high-profile interviews this year on the Joe Rogan podcast and to controversial new Fox News personality Tucker Carlson, who is often cited as having a deep influence on the Trump administration. So, they basically, I, I think what's happening here basically is because because Mind is is a free speech platform, and the let's say apparently left wing platforms such as well Google, some of the people involved there have been kicking out a lot of right wing people because of the things they're saying, and those people have then looked for somewhere else to go online and found Minds. They've then lumped in, um, well, basically um, Bill Ottman from Minds has obviously been invited on by right wing people to talk and gain exposure and obviously as a CEO of a company you're not going to take miss an opportunity to go on national news or something like that and without going into any of the details and doing real journalistic um, due diligence or having any integrity or balance and actually listen to what Bill, um, Bill Ottman has said Vice has basically just tried to associate him with the right wing Nazism and yeah I mean it's just terrible it's terrible reporting and you know Vice was interesting when it started out as as someone else said the other day, yes, they did great video when they went to North Korea early on. They did other ones. Um, there's a few that stand out that are on Eureka.org from back then, years ago. And then they got bought out and basically sold out to mainstream. And just like all of the corporations, all the companies that have started out a bit rebellious and then get bought out, they basically get homogenized and turned into just another clone of the right wing. Well, I call it right wing, but authoritarian... Um, elitist kind of propaganda dissemination uh, networks that that we see as being basically mainstream they you know vice tries to sound a little bit counterculture because that's its origins and it wants to appeal to younger people who are looking for that kind of thing but really it's most of the time it's just a it's just another thought prison it's just another trap to suck you in and get you thinking a load of lies uh, that's convenient for the people that own it to have you thinking and that's it really so Definitely dump Vice if if you want my opinion on it. Um, you know, do go and check out Minds. Definitely go and check out Steam. I personally, you know, I turned down working for for um, Minds partially because I was running my own website and partially because, to be honest, I didn't feel like they really understood the um, the issues involved enough for me to want to get heavily involved with them. I've been involved with other social networks before, and you know, I have a good idea of what I'm looking for now. So I decided not to take that job and to. Um, uh, yeah, just work on my own project and then help out the Steam blockchain as well. And I feel like that was the right decision. And yeah, so please, if, you, if, you, if you're interested in free speech and actual freedom and actual change, my suggestion is go and check out Steam, go and check out Eureka.org and, you know, by all means, go and check out Minds as well. But you're going to find, in my opinion, that, that there's a better uh, representation of balance, let's say, on Steam and uh, um, Eureka than minds and definitely better than the mainstream sites like facebook and so on so anyway just wanted to comment on that and uh let's let's not get things too twisted eh <laughs> peace